Welcome back to a brand new Blender tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make this sniper scope view, which is very powerful uh, and can be done loads of different ways, but this time I'm going to show you how to do it with a PNG image from Google. So delete everything in your scene and let's go enable the add on import images as plain as if you don't already. This is super powerful, I highly recommend it, it's really great. Make sure you have the that built in add on enabled. Now let's go shift A or go to the add button up there, images, import images as planes. Now we, once we've uh, clicked on that we can go find our PNG image and since it has transparency it is see through which is super super perfect for what we're doing. So let's go to look dev mode so we can activate the texture and uh, now let's rotate it because it's, it's the wrong way, it's upside down, it's uh, flat. So our X 90 degrees, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis, and uh, G Y to move it out of the way. So we have the center safe, and we import the second uh, plane, which is actually our video. So we import our video as a plane. Here we go, import image as plane, and rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis as well. Okay, now let's actually um, make sure it plays. Yeah, it plays fine. Okay, now let's set the beginning and the end frames so we have uh, enough to work with. We have all the uh, the time we need and get rid of the stuff that you don't need. Basically, trim it. Okay, now the beginning and end frames are set. Let's go add a camera so we can actually see something. Probably actually shouldn't have deleted it, but I felt like doing it anyway. So let's just go add another camera, add a camera, camera, Alt R, Alt G to remove the location and rotation, um, the, um, the location and rotation, R X 90, G Y to move it out, and then go into camera view, and let's press G and just zoom it in. There. Now we have to make everything fit to the camera view so nothing's left behind, nothing's all black in the background. Completely covered. Okay, now we've done that, we need to sort out these edges because the image behind can, can be seen through it. So import a plane, x 90 degrees as well, and G, Y to move it out of the way so it's not completely on our footage. Okay, now as you can see, we need to go to Tab to go to Edit Mode. Control R to add the edge loop cut, and uh, I'm going to move it out of the way. We're going to move it onto the side here. Move it onto the side of the sniper scope. Control R again, move it onto the side of the sniper scope, and then we will be good and we'll be able to cut a hole in the middle so we select face select, select the center and delete faces okay now we've got rid of that we can finally set the colors set it all to black except that there's a slight problem with the image because it's not exactly black it's grey so we need to augment the metallic to get rid of all this greyness so we do the same for the sidebars and for the image, the PNG image itself. So now it's completely black and that's perfect for what we want, as you can see. But as you can see we can still see the background and that's not ideal. So if you select the camera, you go into the camera settings and go down to here and select all the way to one. There we go. Now when you're in camera view it will be completely black so you can focus on the final product. And as you can see, it's just me walking out. And this is perfect. If this is all you wanted, you can stop here. But now let's get into animating this, if you want to continue. So, let's go and add a bit of handheld animation. To make it look uh, realistic, to make it look like there's an actual person behind there actually holding it and aiming, trying to kill me. Great. Love it. <laughs> so, let's just, just uh, turn on auto keyframing and uh, select the... Uh, background footage here and let's just G to move it every so every couple of frames but as you can see 
the sky is overlapping the images and the uh, video isn't big enough. So, to fix this, I'm going to go into world settings and set it all the way to white because that's the color of my sky. Now I'm going to go to rendered mode. When I move the image down, it's barely noticeable because the sky is white as well. So this is a quick tip fix for footage like this. You probably won't have the same kind of footage, but if you do, then this might help you out. Okay, now we just move it around every few frames to seem handheld and like somebody's actually going to kill me. Great. And once done that, we're going to add some rotation, just some slight, um, slight uh, rotation to seem handheld and uh, human not so robotic. But as you can see it starts off completely still and this isn't ideal so let's pause it and go to the beginning to add a uh, another keyframe so it starts off in motion like it's suddenly breathing, there's imperfections, there's chaos. So let's add a keyframe and as you can see it looks a hell of a lot better already because it's already in motion and following my head and that, that seems pretty realistic to me. So let's just add a bit of rotation, like you said, to seem a little less robotic and CGI, more real. So select the foot to the scope itself, turn on auto keyframing, and go through every few frames and add another keyframe. Just slight rotations to seem more human. Okay, now that that's done, you can see it seems a hell of a lot more realistic because you've got those little detailed imperfections that you we well, never really pay attention to, but if they're not there, then you realize it without knowing what is missing. But you can tell, your brain knows. So now let's go add even more imperfections with procedural shake, camera shake. So let's go down to the, shade, uh, the um, graph editor, let's go to frame 1, select the camera, an eye to add a keyframe and then once selected the keyframe let's go to the side panel, the magic hidden panel here and select a noise modifier now we can add some procedural camera shake with this so let's go uh, find our graph we can change all these different values, the strength, the scale and those other things but first we've got to find a graph to have a visualization of what's going on here we go, all these are uh, red bumps, that, that's our, our camera shake, but it's way chaotic here, there's way too much noise. So we can play with the scale and the strength to lower it down just to have a subtle hint and a slight camera shake just to add some imperfections as if like the breathing, the movement of, of his body and all that, all little details that would be in the real world, we have to uh, imitate that to have the most realistic simulation possible, the most realistic uh, copy. So now let's uh, copy this and select the y, uh, y axis and paste it again. Now we can change some values to not have it uniform and the same, but we can find the graph that's on green. And we can zoom in and change the offset, scale, the strength just slightly. So we have slight subtle movement and for the z-axis we do the same, we paste it and let's just change the strength a little bit and the scale and let's also a slight but subtle but really useful camera shake. And okay, that's almost done, now all we need to do is render this out. So let's go to render, put the number of samples to 1 because we have predefined resolutions and everything. Go uh, select a video file format. I suggest you do the same as I, because this is, in my experience, the best file format. And um, let's select an output folder. In my case, I'm going to overlay it on my previous test render. But you should create a new file or a new, fo a new um, video. Now let's make sure the resolution is the same and the frame rate is the same as well, and the uh, the begin and end frame are, are good and now let's render this out with control F12 or render the animation. Okay, hope this tutorial is good. I um I'm gonna do a few more tutorials like this, so if 
you want to see them as well and if you don't want to miss them you should probably subscribe but then again nobody does so thank you goodbye <laughs>